I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. <laughs> you mean, you mean the world to me. More than the world. More than the world. I messed it up again. <laughs> I got you crying now, don't I? <laughs> Yep, I'm crying. It's awesome, but if I say it makes you cry. Yeah, you move me to tears. <laughs> it's all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Moving them to tears. Moving them to tears. No, I'm Luther. I'm Luther. I'm Luther today. <laughs> hey, what's going on, people? It is another Sunday living on the edge. You know what we do, but every Sunday we come here to chop it up with people just like you. Busy people with families who find their lives cluttered. So we're here to help you unclutter those lives using three things. Faith, fire, and focus. Getting you ready so that you can live the best life ever. Your best life ever. Yes, we are going to share today. They might stop watching. That's scary. It is kind of scary. So we're talking about part two. Balancing your life. So we're gonna hear from none other than the man himself, my man, my mellow, my ace boom goon. <laughs> <laughs> he was so silly. <laughs> Philip D. I won't tell you what the D stands for. Edge. Last week we started talking about balance and, and we saw it from your perspective. Um, this week, um, just thinking about balance, you know, f for me, when I think about balance in and of itself, I, I, I never really thought about what it was. Like, I, I, I never did. That, that was never a thing in which, you know, growing up, coming up, going through college, you know, looking for a job, all that good stuff that I said, you know what? I want my life to be balanced. I, I, I never really... I never really said that. I know for me, um, I'll never forget, um, you know, many of you, you may or may not know, but I travel a lot. I'm on an airplane a lot, flying every which way a lot, doing leadership development, that kind of stuff. But um, I remember when, when I got this job and we, we talked about it, we prayed about it, we said, yeah, let's do it. You know, and, and it was about chasing that, that corporate dream, chasing that, that passion, you know, becoming the, the best of the best as it related to, to this field, this industry, and speaking and leadership development. And um, I was super excited about that. And I, I think I had your support in that. And we were, we were pushing and we were going. But, you know, once we had our family going, um, you were working full time. I'm working full time. I'm away from the house, which, you know, some of you watching right now, you, you're experiencing this right now. One, you know, you or your spouse, they travel. And, and that in and of itself brings an, an entirely different dynamic to life. Um, you know, my wife, I'll never forget one day, um, she came to me and she says, you know, um, I feel like a single mother. Now, now, now we're married, right? Happily, happily married, by the way, right? But when she comes and she says, I feel like a single mother, that, that does something to you. Like, wait a minute, you know, because as a man, you know, I'm taught to provide. I'm taught to go out, to, to work hard, to, you know, make sure you have food on the table, make sure you keep the lights on, make sure people have, you know, clothes on their back, that, that kind of, I'm taught, you know, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm hardwired to do that. So I'm busting my butt and yet, and so my wife feels empty, right? So, so I'm still struggling with what is this thing a balance. What, 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 is that, what does that actually mean? And I'll never forget um, my oldest son or our oldest son. Um, he came to me one day and he, and he, and he asked me, he's like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I, uh, live I live here, right? I mean, th this is the house that your mother and I provide for you. And um, he just kind of said, but, but you're, you're, you're always somewhere else. And he didn't mean anything by it. He didn't know anything, you know, and he didn't know any better. But I know for me, that was kind of like, whoa, that was that was that was a, a major blow to me. So, you know, I have my wife telling me that she feels like a single mother sometimes when, when I travel. I got my son asking me why in the world I'm here. And then the third experience that I had, I had a, a colleague that I was actually pretty close to um, make a, a temporary situation permanent. And I'll never forget that, um, you know, getting the phone call that, you know, somebody that, that you work closely with is not here anymore and is not coming back. Um, you know, this was somebody that, that I definitely looked up to. I, I loved his facilitation style, his his training and delivery style. And he was a life of everything um, um, that he that he was a part of. So that that hit me. So I'm in the car. I'm driving to Jacksonville, Florida. 
my, my wife's telling me she feels like a single mother. My son's asking me why I'm there. And a friend who, or a person that I call friend that I work with, you know, is no longer with us. So I'm driving, and I'll never forget, on my way to Jacksonville, Florida, I literally pulled over on the side of the road, and I was like having a breakdown. And and I was like, I, I can't do this. I'm I'm literally done. I don't want to go to the class. I mean, this was this was a Monday. I'm driving. I don't want to go to the class. I don't want to do. I don't want to do anything because I am done. It didn't matter to me anymore. Life like that didn't matter to me. The only thing that mattered to me was finding, you know, that place of, of, of fulfillment, that place where where you were happy, right? Where where my, my son was happy, where, where I was happy. And all this other stuff, it didn't matter. The money didn't, didn't matter. And we were making more money than I've ever seen in my life. It was much better than ramen noodle budget, right? I mean, I mean, it was great. But I was still empty on the inside, and I'll never forget, I called my boss, and I was like, I'm done. You can you can find somebody else to do the session, to do the class, because I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm done. And my boss at the time, being an awesome, awesome boss, he, he kind of walked me off the ledge. But in, at that moment, that's when I realized that I got to get some kind of balance in my life. I, I, I got to get some balance um, to the point to where... <sighs> What, what was important to me was, was displayed in everything that, that I did. Because this is what I found. You can have all the money in the world, all the best cars, clothes, houses, all that good stuff. But if you're not balanced on the inside and fulfilled on the inside, you have zero. So from that very moment, my, my life uh, took, a, took a turn in which I was trying to find fulfillment for me, for my wife, for, for our family, I was trying to find that. So when you speak about what, what do you need to balance or what do you have to have, for, for me, the, the first thing that I had to find was perspective and get the right perspective on what was truly important to me. I had, I had taken life and made work the most important thing in my life. Because I said, well, if I, if I work hard, I'll make the money. And if I make the money, I'll do this, right? right? Because, because that's what we're taught and conditioned. But the truth of the matter is, I was doing all those things and I still wasn't happy. So what I found out was that that right there, that, that wasn't the, the, the priority that, that I needed to be. So, so what I had to do was figure out and lay out what was priority for me. And I want you to do it right now. Ask yourself this question. What are the things that you value the most? Like what are, what are the things that are, are the most important to you? See, when, when I did that, what I found was that God was first for me because our faith is extremely important. And that's the cornerstone of every single thing that we do. So my faith was first and I wrote it down. Faith. My family was the number two thing. It was a close number two. But my, my family what, what was the number two thing. So if I please God, I, I knew that everything else would be taken care of. Namely, my family, right? And the number three thing was, you can fill in the blank. It was everything else. Job, career, no, any of those things was, was number three. But this was the problem. The problem was I was so out of line and, and out of balance. Meaning... My number one thing, even though I said it was God, that was the thing that I was spending the least amount of time with. The number two thing that I said was family, I was barely spending any time at all with my family. The number three thing that I said was the least important, which was career, career aspirations, those sort of things, it's where I was spending all of my time. So when we speak about balance, I had to realize that my priorities were out of order. And until the priorities got in order, I could never come to a place of, of fulfillment. And I could never be happy, and I don't think any of us could ever really be happy. There, came a, there was a season where we were really, really praying very hard mm -hmm. to get you off the road. I mean, in addition to working, we were pastoring, mm -hmm. we were loving on other people, we were pouring into other people, but, you know, we truly weren't even pouring into ourselves and um, even into each other right. or even into our children. And so, like you, you said, there was a lot of emptiness that right. was going on, looking for, seeking that fulfillment. And we prayed and prayed and prayed. And I think it was about literally nine years. Yeah. Nine yeah. years that we prayed for Philip to come off the road. And 
what we found is that God made a way. He answered the prayer, just like God always does. He's faithful. Mm -hmm. He he answered Mm -hmm. the prayer. He gave us what we thought we needed most at the time, even after nine years of praying. And you got to remember, you know, now at this time, Trey is, you know, he's a third, Third, fourth grader. Um, He might have even been a fifth grader at that time because there was some time prior Mm -hmm. to that. But our life had moved on and now he was coming home and he was going to work in a a company, a, a nonprofit locally and be home all the time. And what we realized real quickly because we lacked so much balance, there there had to be a rebalancing, so to right. speak, because we had become accustomed to living in such a certain way. Right. You know, I had become very independent mm-hmm. and, you know, had just doing everything myself. And I think sometimes that still kind of creeps up with him still. Now he's back traveling again. But we, God had given us what we wanted and we mm-hmm. realized that that wasn't the answer. Right. You know, it still was, again, like you said, it was about keeping priorities and proper alignment. Because I remember, and I don't know if you remember this, but I remember he he's home and him being at home, and this is going to sound crazy and, you know, God, I'm certainly thankful, but him being home was more of a frustration mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. because he had been gone for not for nine years. He was gone 36 to 42 weeks out of a year three and four days every single week almost Mm -hmm. with the exception of some holidays and vacation time, especially towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And he was back home, but he was not here. Right. He had become so accustomed to living in a hotel room by himself throughout Mm -hmm. the week that I, you know, I was frustrated because I'm like, he's here, but he's so far gone. He's still thousands of miles away. And I, I can remember when I finally broke down, I mean, I I had a lot of breakdowns over the nine years. I mean, pregnant many times. I mean, it's not not right. even really joking matter. I mean, serious sometimes. Right. You know, like like your experience in pulling over in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Like literally, I cannot do this. Mm-hmm. And there literally have been times where I literally was at the end, where I thought, you know, the only answer mm-hmm. was just being gone from the world. And it had it not been my faith in God so strong, mm-hmm. and my love for God and my my belief in the Word, I, I probably wouldn't be here. I'm right. just being very frank and extremely transparent to share that. But I remember looking at him and say, "You're here, but you're gone." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that was really a pivotal moment because it was just a short year and a half, maybe two mm-hmm. years, that he was here. And I think. In hindsight, I know, I don't think, I know that God did that to show us that that wasn't the answer, that he had a plan, that, you know, even us being here right now talking about this and sharing it with you, I mean, maybe you have a spouse that travels, maybe this can be, um, just bring you some hope and be uplifting to you because God always knows what we need. Right. So God allowed it for him to go back to the same company that he had previously been working for and it was like okay I got a second chance to really get this right Right. and it is it's a constant balancing match you know with my flesh and Mm -hmm. my spirit you know my spirit it sometimes gets weak and my flesh gets strong Mm -hmm. and like I said I was a sing I felt like a single mother Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if if I can do it by myself what I need you for or you know thoughts about you know, I didn't get into marriage to be alone or to be right. lonely. Right. And then, you know, God to just, you know, then I get on my face not to pray for what I want. Mm-hmm. I finally learned that that in itself was the balancing lesson. Right. Was right. to learn to sacrifice myself mm-hmm. and my wants and my desires and say, God, I want what you want for us. I want what you want for our marriage. Right. I want what you want for our children more than I want anything. Right. Because again, he'll give you what you want. Mm-hmm. But it's not always what you need. Right. And so that's that's the true, that's the key right there. Yeah. yeah. Is just crucifying your own personal will and Absolutely. letting God, letting God have his way in your life. As you're speaking about God, I mean, that right there was a cornerstone. You know, the truth of the matter is, it was never really about being, quote unquote, at home more. No. You know, that 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 did not give us the fulfillment that we thought that, that it would give us. But when we truly 
put ourselves down and got, and got to him and got to God and allowed God to orchestrate the plan, he was able to do that. Because, you know, here's the thing, and we've realized this, you know, it's not that God, it's not like he doesn't want to do this, right? right. You know, the Bible speaks to us and said he, he's never slacking his promises for his children. So, so it, he wants to pour out to you, you know, as our spiritual father, he says this all the time, you know, we just have to be willing to receive it. So until we were able to receive God, his grace, his mercy, his love, what he wanted for us individually, what he wanted for us collectively, until we were able to receive that, all it left was a void and, and emptiness. And, and that's the truth. No money could fill it. No. no, no, no home could fill it. No, or excuse me, no house could fill it. No cars could fill it. No shopping could, no, none of that could fill it. The only thing that could truly bring forth that, 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 that true um, fulfillment is, is him. And that's so true. Yeah. Because we had, we had that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we <laughs> When people would look at us, people think we're like the perfect family. Like, yeah. Oh, they got it all together. And people would always think we had money and we just kind of look at each other and laugh. But literally, God, even that, he stripped all of that away. Yeah. It was, you know, going from having everything and arriving at the top to literally like trying to redefine ourselves and who are we? Yeah. So sometimes God, in order to balance you, yeah. literally what he has to do is he has to strip away all the weights. And the very thing that you think is helping you get to the top mm -hmm. is the very thing that is keeping you anchored and holding you to the bottom. It's mm. the very thing. Yeah. And so just, you know, let God just lift every weight and lift every burden. Just strip it off of you. Just, you know, right now even, just tell him, God, you know what? If I'm holding on to anything that's weighing me down that I think is going to help me arrive to some magical place, just take it. Just take it. And, and, and I'll just say this as we get ready to close today. You know, there is no magical place called balance, right? There's, there's, it's not like this this mystical place that if I get there, I'll, I'll, I'll be balanced. That, that's not it. You know, the truth of the matter is this. Balance is, is a process of, of not finding you, but, but finding him. Because when you find him, what you were created, ordained, set aside to do, that thing will produce. And on the inside, listen, you will have everything you need in life. I'm so thankful for everything that, that we've gone through in the past almost 17 years of marriage. Now, 24 years together? That's a long time, girl a long time and I got it right right okay. so 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 we've gone through a lot and there's still a whole lot more to go but it's it's literally been a refining process to get us to this place right now not that we're saying that we have it all the way perfect but we've gone through just a couple of things and and what we found is that with him in him and through him that everything has worked itself out so that's all we got for you today. I hope that you really enjoyed the openness, the honesty, the transparency that, that we shared um, today. I pray that it was a blessing to you. Yes. Now, if you have not already done so, make sure you click the subscribe button on this page. Go to the YouTube channel and click subscribe on the YouTube channel. Click like on the Facebook page. And make sure you share it out. There's someone out there that needs to hear this today, and you know exactly who that person is. Share it, share it, share it. Live it on the edge. Live it on the edge. We out. We out. Peace.